Joining us here in the studio for this week's Your Health segment is Dr. Matthew Mardinet, asthma and allergy specialist at the University of Maryland St. Joseph Medical Center. Doctor, thank you for being with us. Thank you, Jeff. How are you doing? Good. I knew it was allergy season because I, I have a black car. And when I looked at it the other day, it was coated with this sort of yellow tint. Right, right. Every year at this time. Lack of rain helped it a little bit. It's been very busy this week. In terms of uh, patients? Patients and a lot of kids and children with eye swelling and sneezing. It's been, a, it's been pretty crazy. So that pollen blowing around is what it's a form you, you of breathe form in, it gets in your eyes? Exactly. It's a formula for intense allergies when there's no, no rain and it's just blowing around and recirculating. It's a, it's a good day for the allergists, but sometimes not good for their patients. Now, it bothers me a little bit, a little bit of hay fever, but there are some people who are completely immune to this. There are plenty of people who are immune to this, but there's also some people who get irritated by, by pollen. It's not always an allergic process. Sometimes just a sheer amount of pollen can irritate people's eyes or nose. So it's not always allergy that irritates these people. Broad classes of allergies. I mean, it's not just hay fever. Some people, it's, uh, it's drugs. Uh, some people, it's types of foods. Well, right. Is, is there a common theme? Well, listen, I'm, allergies, you're allergic to a protein. Proteins can be drugs, including penicillin, things in the air such as pollen, uh, venom, bee venom, and uh, uh, other medications, uh, foods, as, as, exactly foods as well. How uh, good is the arsenal this day, these days for, for helping somebody, specifically somebody who has uh, what we commonly call hay fever? Well, I mean, the arsenal has gotten, gotten expanded a little bit over the years. We still have the, the standard uh, antihistamines and nasal corticosteroids that do help prevent symptoms. Uh, we have immunotherapy, which is the more advanced treatment for people who are not controlled with environmental control and with medications. That typically is the next step in controlling allergy. You told me 40% of the people you see don't actually have allergies? I see a lot of people come in with chronic congestion or drainage and probably chronic cough that it's, just, it's a very hard thing to control. These people, we test them and they show us nothing to allergens. Uh, but bottom line, they can be treated, but it's a little, little bit more challenging than a straight allergic person. What's the allergy testing process like? What, what I recall was you get right. stuck by a right. needle a right. lot. We do it, it depends on who we're testing. If we're testing a four-year-old, we're going to do a much more benign treatment. We're going to do a little prick test, okay? And that's going to show us basically do they have antibodies to a specific allergen? And we'll do it depends on what their question is. Is it food allergy? We'll do it for mostly for foods. If it's environmental, we'll do a little bit of both. But it really depends on why they're coming in and seeing us. Now, adults, sometimes we take it to an intradermal level. It's a little deeper underneath the skin. It's a little bit more sensitive, so it brings out a little bit more uh, data. And we, then we interpret that data and we treat. So people come in, they have a history of congestion, and they, they're certain... The doctor, you know, family doctor said you got to go see the allergist. Right, right. And, you know, a lot of times, like I said, they come in with different types of symptoms, drainage, dripping, congestion. Sometimes it's not the allergy. Sometimes it can be chronic sinus disease. Sometimes these people have what we call non-allergic rhinitis, which can be a big player, in, you know, in the allergy world. Let's, uh, let's run through some of the treatments. But first, let me remind our viewers, if you have a question about uh, asthma, allergies or related conditions, give us a call. We'll have the number up on the screen. You can also tweet your questions. The Twitter address is at MPT News. So you mentioned the sprays. How right. effective are those? Sprays are, are probably the most effective treatment, but the problem is you have to do this consistently. It does not work as needed, okay? And basically what I tell people you got to prepare for the season or prepare for the allergy. If you do not prepare, you will fail. You need to be on these things before the nose is lit up and the inflammation is out of control because once the nose is completely shut, it's very difficult for the nasal spray to get where it needs to go. So are you telling people you're on this stuff 12 months or well, you I start mean, in February to get ready for exactly. it? Exactly. If, it, if it's just seasonal, I'll start them at least three weeks before the season. I'll tell them, hey, let's get ready. Let's go. Now, sometimes that's not enough, and then we have to do other things. But bottom line, you get on early, it's kind of a putting out the fire before it's lit. Okay, it really do, does Do you have help. a preference? I mean, there, there are prescription versions, but you can get it over the counter there, now. It, it's like a shoe that fits. You've got to find one you like. You've got to find one that you are comfortable with. Some of them have alcohol in them that's a little bit more drying. Some of them are, are less smelly, so people like the non-scented ones as well. Uh, let's grab a phone call, then we'll talk about the pills. Margaret's in Baltimore County. Margaret, thank you for the call. Go ahead. 
Oh, hi. My question is this. What can you do to prevent an asthma attack when you know that smoking is one of your triggers and you're stuck on an MTA disability bus, of all cases, with a driver that's nonstop smoking? No is kidding. Is there anything you can do? Yeah, I don't think that's supposed to happen, but we'll get you an answer uh, on no, the air. it's not supposed to happen, <laughs> and I made complaints, but, you know, I don't want to be threatened by somebody who knows where I live. So I'm just wondering, what can I do to help myself in that kind of situation? Because the last time I was sick for two weeks. Yeah, we'll get you an answer. Margaret, good luck. Thank you. Um, well, that's a difficult one. I mean, obviously, avoidance is, is the number one with that, and I would maybe call the you know authorities or whoever is in charge and make sure that anonymous this, tip exactly yeah. right uh, you can pre-treat asthma we can get you on inhalers that will probably give you some some leeway or a little bit of buffer but if you're that sensitive to tobacco smoke it'd be very difficult um, All right, but, on, on the um, the hay fever uh, uh, treatment um, the uh, antihistamines have been around forever. When right. I was a kid, it was right. these little yellow pills. That, right, core traumatized. Yeah, and they, they put you to sleep, yeah, but they, they help with yeah. the... And, and there. then there's the next generation, which is a little bit better. Is that where we are now? Well, listen, I mean, my whole thing is that, you know, we want to gear it to some people are more sensitive to others. You know, some people can take cetirizine, which is a little bit more dry and sets generic zero attack. And some people, Allegra, as a selling point, it makes nobody tired, even at three times the dosing. So basically, it's not supposed to work all that well either. Well, it works pretty well, but listen, sometimes, unfortunately, we have to combine things, okay? Sometimes I'll pick one that's a little less sedating during the day and maybe a little something at night if they have breakthrough. We sometimes have to give them a way to manage because one pill might not be enough. Sometimes people need more. Okay, Does then, that stuff help with, with uh, people who have eye symptoms, they, you know, itchy, it watery that, eyes? I mean, and it's been strictly help for the irritant symptoms, sneezing, runny nose, itchy eyes, post-nasal drip. Now, some of the older antihistamines are actually better for drainage because they have what we call anticholinergic effects. They dry things up. Whereas Allegra is a newer one that doesn't make anybody tired, preferred by the FAA for flying, but it doesn't dry as much. So it does help for the itchy sneezes, but not the drainage and dripping. Interesting. The FAA doesn't want you flying on Zyrtec? Yeah, no. no. Really? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Uh, George in Anne Arundel County. George, thanks for the call. Go ahead. Thank you. You bet. Yeah, I was wondering if medical science has determined what the, the root cause of allergies is. Uh, is it all genetic? And why do some people, some children, have it early and then, uh, quote, uh, outgrow it, unquote, and then other people will be okay as children and then develop it uh, when they get into their 30s or 40s? Wow, bunch of good that's, questions. George, thank you very much. That's that's a Great question. Uh, there is no, been no gene, specific gene, has identified the allergy. It's related to be multifactorial in a bunch of different genes. So we're not exactly sure why that happens. I can say most of this is genetic, and 90% of children who have both parents who are allergic will have allergies in some type. It might be mild or moderate. If one parent's allergic, 50% of those children will most likely develop some type of environmental allergies. But we don't know why it expresses itself. We often think that maybe it's the exposure in early childhood to either a cat or dog. Sometimes people will get desensitized or they'll have less allergies or sometimes they can have more. It really goes both ways and there's no great studies that prove that. Uh, a couple of Twitter questions. Any long-term effects of using loratadine? Is that something? That's, that's, that's close gener enough. Generic clarity. Using that, uh, using that long term. Honestly, and I'm, I've done the studies. There, there really is no long term issue with any antihistamine. The short term issue, if you use too much, could be dry mouth and tiredness. But in general, there's no. You know, there's been antihistamines created in the 1940s. We've had no issues long term ever proven. So these things are very safe in general. What if you have to work outdoors? Well, you're somebody who's got a problem with this. Yeah. You see people walking around with, uh, looks like surgical masks. Right. I mean, would that help at all? That does help. I mean, barriers do help. I mean, obviously jumping, you know, in the shower right when you get out of the, out of the muck. Because a lot of times we don't, you know, if I play golf on Sunday morning, it's not usually Sunday morning that I'm hurting. It's usually Sunday night or Monday is when I pay for it. So getting out of the, getting out of the junk, washing off, jumping in the shower, a little saline rinse, that can definitely help us as well. Uh, one of our producers uh, was interested in the neti pot. Right. And for people who haven't heard of this, it's like a, it looks like, um, you know, the I dream a genie thing. And somehow you, you tilt over and you pour a pot full of water right. up your nose right. 
and to, to flush things out. Do, do you have patients who have good results? I have many patients who like the neti pot. Other people like the squeeze bottle. Some people like the simply saline. It's, again, you got to find a shoe that fits for you. Some people cannot take that much debris and, or much liquid going into their uh, nasal passages, and sometimes it can feel cloggy in the ears. Uh, you just got to be a little careful. So that's not a myth. I mean, it, it's it's sort of, well, it, it looks does, like a gimmick, but it it's, does two things. Yeah. It gets allergens out of, out of your nose, and it also kind of almost like flossing and the brushing of the teeth. It kind of vitalizes the tissue, gets a little bit healthier. Yeah. It does help. Well, what's your advice for somebody who um, just doesn't want to mess with it? I mean, they sort of suffer through this time of year. They, you know, they don't want to be on the on the drugs. I I mean, you're just, you're just hurting yourself. There's no reason to suffer. There's ways we can get you. If I can get you 50% better, that's almost 1,000% better for a lot of people. And you're so, talking about stuff without terrible side effects. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, as long as it's explained, I tell them how to work it and things. Typically, people get by and they feel, feel better. I'm not saying they feel perfect all the time. Let's take another call. Charles County, uh, this is Bob. Bob, thanks for the call. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Yeah, um, I had asthma when I was a child. I was allergic right. to dust. And... They say that sometimes, as you get older, it disappeared, but as you get older, it comes back. Like 30, 40 years later, it can reoccur. Is that true? Great question. Thanks. Good question. Um, you know, it's unpredictable. That's why I'm in, and I see all age groups. It can come back, but I'd say for the most part, childhood asthma that goes away typically stays away from what I see. Now, when you get older, we find more drainage issues, dripping congestion. We see that a little bit more. But asthma typically uh, stays away. I can say that. And if it comes back, it's usually fairly easily treated. Uh, Patricia in Carroll County. Patricia, thank you for calling. Go ahead. Uh, yes, I was wondering, I don't know if you've addressed this or not, but eye allergies where your eyes drain more than anything and they itch pretty constantly and you don't, the old tea bag remedy doesn't work. Is there anything in particular for that? You ever been tested? Can I ask? Yes. Okay, so you know what you're allergic to? Yes. Okay, thanks very much. Well, I mean, listen, I mean, it's, it's if you're allergic to tree pollen, it's obviously trying to avoid peak tree pollen hours, hours, wearing sunglasses outside. These are things that might help, probably not as much as you'd like. Uh, there are eye drops uh, that stabilize the mast cells or antihistamine eye drops to help. Sometimes it's bad enough we have to put people on a, a couple, you know, a week or so of oral steroid drops so they don't gouge their eyes out. But I mean, overall, if that's if severe, we talk about further treatments, desensitizing and things like that. Understanding also that a lot of the running of the eyes Part of allergy eye is dry eye. And once you start rubbing, the eyes get dry and they start to weep, okay? Sometimes adding a little wetting solution also to the allergy eye drop is effective and a good antihistamine regimen. We've also shown that certain nasal sprays also, for some reason, we're not sure exactly why, do help ocular symptoms as well. So being on a good regimen definitely should help your eyes. We have to leave it there. I should have asked, is Dr. Martinet? Yes. All right, Dr. Matthew Martinet of the uh, University of Maryland St. Joseph Medical Center. Thanks for coming by. Appreciate it. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System.